tall, so not the biggest barbarian, but I'm jacked. <laughs> <laughs> Let's if we put this in two braids and then we got to get the And then we can put this in the Oh, Papa! Yes, you may. Put your hands up, it's bad out! No, 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 no. Sorry, you're probably a prostitution, Sammy Girls. Yes, you, you, I'm gonna fight you. You guys know who I am, right? Yeah. 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 Goggles. You're Dr. Mole. Robot. Dr. Robot. Dr. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Take a moment to try to stop laughing. <laughs> okay. okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. Why not? It worked again. Maybe I'm Batman. And I even I don't hate that for the record. I hate I hate the fandom of Batman. Oh, okay. so cool. Look that's that's way more people. It is. It is. It's a lot of like, actual human beings. Were you, um, gonna... you need to rub this crap <laughs> off your neck and not smell like me. Or a wolf at all. Just start rubbing his neck and just getting like... I am fairly sure it doesn't matter what I smell like at this point. <clears throat> to a feline, you have wolf's piss on you. I'm just going to point at my feline eyes. I have some time. You've just tuned in. We had the brilliant idea while we were fishing at the Dark Moon Festival. Oh, jeez. To do a dungeon with fishing poles equipped. <laughs> because I'm why not? Mayor, and so we drank all of the alcohol in our bags, and we equipped our fishing poles and our aquatic pets, and we went to do a dungeon. I feel like I need to close out. So this was the end of our epic tale. What holds for next week as the heroes set sail? We may find our family, we may find where things start. All we know is to follow our hearts. So our heroes set forth to pillage and to wander in the magical continent of wonder. Indigo Connect. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Oh, woo woo woo! Oh, oh, let's fix this. Oh, a little bit better right there. Hi! Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. It is Tuesday night and we were singing songs. Uh, as we do before a stream starts and we have the commercials going. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying yourselves. Thank you so much for tuning in as the gang prepares for some major adventuring and changes. And I... I... <laughs> Wait, let me do it again. No, 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 I can do it better. I can do it better. <laughs> That's a good idea. You should probably yeah. do that like right before the stream starts. Yeah, no, it's a super before good he's... idea. It's just, it's... Hi, everybody. We got a few announcements before we get started. Uh, this is going to be Al's last game. Let's give it up for Al, everybody. He's just got some work stuff coming up. And, no. uh, we got a few announcements before we get started. You son of a bitch. Um, uh, yeah, uh, let's talk about uh, upcoming schedule uh, this coming week. Uh, today is Tuesday, tomorrow is Wednesday night. Uh, nothing happening here on Indigo Chameleon, but Indigo and I uh, guest star over on the Plaster Dragon. We do our Sunday Wake It This Way Comes. Uh, it is a modern day D&D &D set in Boston, and come and join us. Uh, we're going to be a little late to the party, I think, tomorrow night, but uh, stay tuned. We'll be there. It will be great. Uh, Thursday will be a oh, wow. Uh, it's World of Warcraft, and we're planning on going through another fungeon. What's a fungeon? It's like a dungeon, but more fun. So uh, tune in for that. Uh, Friday night is Neverland. Uh, we had a really good time uh, with our special guest star and guest pirate. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, guest pirate. Uh, we, we love you, John. Um, as previously shown in an interview, 
Yeah. Does happen here on the channel. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I need to talk to him about that impulse. No, we don't. Um, so that was uh, that was Friday. Join us for another adventure in Neverland as the gang uh, gets ready to uh, uh, do a little bit more exploring and, and trying to find uh, some of their lost boys and never girls. Um, Saturday night, we are usually quiet here, um, but uh, there's lots of content going on in different places. And our friends over at Random Encounter Productions and Plaster Dragon always does a one night stand that you can watch. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, uh, have a drink and kick back and watch something there. But on Sunday night, normally we have something going on. I, I am an introvert with extroverted tendencies, so Sunday night is going to be a very quiet night. Uh, but you're, we're still going to be streaming. I think it's time for another homebrew and brew with you! Uh, and you! I will. I'm dead. I'm dying. This is hell. This is hell. This is hell, and I'm dying. No, uh, that's the sound bite. That was so good. For homebrew and brew with you, uh, we are um, we are going to be homebrewing a specialty class uh, this Sunday that hopefully um, we can see if we can get somebody in to come and help us with that. If we can't, uh, then there's plenty of other stuff for us to work on. But uh, somebody, one of our players uh, from D&D &D 101 had the idea to homebrew a class called the Dice Goblin who deals a little bit with like chance and wild magic, but like basically all of their attacks are with <laughs> dice. <laughs> and random. I, I am the dice goblin. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna play around with that. Monday the fifth. Uh, Monday the fifth is going to be a D and D one shot that the premise of will be revealed after tonight's episode. Uh, but the cast is coming together as we speak. Uh, you'll see some familiar faces. You'll see a not-so-familiar face who has only appeared on Tim to Go Chameleon. Just confirmed with me. A good friend of ours, Trevor, uh, is making his... Uh, sitting at the table with me as a DM um, debut. And so, uh, yeah, I'm very excited. So that'll be Monday night. Indigo doesn't even know about this. I don't! Uh, follow us on the Discord for keeping uh, in the know. We have a new channel called Inspiration. It really helped me. I was very selfish this week. And created an inspiration channel on Discord where people can post uplifting quotes and comments and, and things of that sort. And well, when I was writing up campaign stuff today, I just had to <laughs> scroll through and be like, oh, this lifts my heart. And people are posting songs and things like that. So I encourage you to go and hang out there if you need a boost. I know a lot. we have a lot of writers and people working on their own campaigns and their own characters. And life is hard, you know, so we need this sort of release and, and this... Uh, so, so join us on the Discord. There is also a play-by-post run by our very own Aubrey Faith, Gypsy Wolf, uh, who does uh, who is set in a circus, and they're always looking for new members in the circus. And the clown exposure has been minimal, which I appreciate. So far. Uh, so <laughs> well, I, mean, I did try to sort of like, throw a nightmare at you the first night. So yeah, I had it's to, fine. Like, My character is dead inside. Um, so, uh, so please come and join the circus. He's fine. He's fine. He's really fine. Okay, he came out of there alive. First off, rude. First of all, rude. Second of all, I'm patriotic. Third of all, how dare, dare you? Uh, we also have a merch store. Burr, 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 burr. Uh, there's lots of great merch. Uh, I was wearing a baseball tee the other day, but Tracy's like, you can't wear this multiple days in a row. And I said, how dare you? And she's like, Take, go wash it. And I was like, hey, okay. So it's being washed. Uh, with, there's also water bottles and things of that sort. There's a nice cool mug right there. Thank you, Indigo. Uh, it helps us more than anything in the world if you follow and tell your friends. We are oh ever so close to 500 followers, so dropping a follow there helps. If you have Amazon Prime, dropping a free subscribe. If you have Amazon Prime, you can you can follow subscribe for free, uh, and it helps us out a lot. Um, so I think that's it for the announcements for this week. When last we left our band of heroes. Some were died. <laughs> um, a bunch of assassins sort of broke in uh, when our heroes were sleeping, while you were sleeping. Uh, a great movie by Sandra Bullock, not a great D&D &D episode. Um, uh, so uh, the heroes were ambushed in the middle of the night. Uh, they uh, proceeded, some of our heroes who, I think all of our heroes, with the exception of Enwin, uh, had a mark placed upon their arm. Uh, cutting off sort of divine communication. Um, what that means, uh, translating wise, is that uh, a lot of the conversations that our characters were having with divine senses and divine deities has been cut off completely. Um, Mandrake's special, uh, the Cap of Kyle, 
uh, fell off his head, which was a, a blessing maybe because he now is able to wear uh, the the hat of legend, the Mad Hatter's hat. But his connection with his n new buddy Cheshire has been sort of abruptly taken from him. Um, a beholder did attack the bar. It looks like, with the exception of Grim, there were no sort of major casualties here in the bar. But a hero in our midst did fall in the battle. Um, there was a ritual that took place, the Raise the Dead ritual, and Grim seemingly came back beaten, battered, but, but alive, and collapsed in a small heap. Um, th the night ended with uh, a few of our heroes taking watch, including Knock, uh, Mandrake sleeping in the uh, the, the window, window sill. sill. Yeah, um, and then some of our heroes sort of just sort of collapsing in a small heap in their rooms, and that's where we left our heroes last week as they prepare today to venture off towards hell, or the version therein to rescue. Uh, Nix's beloved, Flint, who has taken away and sort of sacrificed himself to save the group in a house fire in an assassination attempt on Nix's life. So uh, we now pick up uh, right where we left off. Here's the deal, gang. Uh, I need to know where everybody's sleeping this evening. Um, you cannot s sleep in a windowsill. I'll, I'll give you a constitution check to see if you can manage to fall asleep and get a long rest, but I, I just don't think okay. for many reasons first and foremost like gravity like that <laughs> like that's gonna be the, that's gonna be tricky to me yeah that's if right. you want to sleep on the floor in the room yeah I'm totally down with that like but just like sleeping in the window cell like that's for my kitty cats not for my robes well, like you you have <laughs> hey but, uh, make an argument about how a window cell is like a tree uh, you're so, wrong. So no, <laughs> it's not gonna. It's not gonna work. Okay, that's right. Uh, so actually, I would, I would, um, I would reach into my bag, take some of the Legos, put them on the windowsill. Okay. Yeah. And then I would lean against the wall, right at the window. Yes. And, and sleep there. Yes, and. Um, uh, you sprinkle the Legos right across the way and, and it would sort of make any sort of noise and, and cause that damage to anybody that were to walk in in, in the bag of everything is awesome uh, and you uh, sprinkle them across the, the windowsill and, and rest for the evening uh, where are you sleeping? probably still the room great, perfect, and you? I you both I'm not going to talk to him yet, but I'm, do I talk to him now? No. We unfortunately, now. I, I, everybody needs a longer. You were interrupted, so you okay. may talk to him. I go to my room. Okay. That's fine. All right. I don't want to um, she's, in her, she's in her bed, door open. Door open, sort of there. Uh, you're, you, no choices will be made for you on where you're sleeping. Thank you. You just sort of, yeah. My and kind and uh, Nick's. Back in my room. Back in your room. Okay. Um, give me a perception check. Uh, are you resting to regain hit points? Are you doing a short rest? You don't really need to sleep. You didn't. You didn't lose any hit points. Lose, yeah, are you doing a short sleep. rest to regain spell slots? Yeah. Yeah. So a normal perception check. That's a twenty-two. Cool. Um, yeah. You guys uh, fairly <laughs> easily rest for the evening. Everything is great. Everything is fine. <laughs> long rest, fine, rest. Fine, uh, uh, long rest, rest. Uh, what that means is you guys will wake up probably around 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Uh, if you're if you're resting throughout the night. When you wake up, uh, my dude, <coughs> you are at negative three to all rolls, attacks, yep. saving throws, ability checks, mm -hmm. just from that sickness of waking up, sort of hungover, and uh, from having been raised from the dead. Um, you are also missing your buddy. Yeah. He's not there. He's not. You feel that access just cut and you, hey, bud, are you there? You can't. Um, uh, when you wake up, uh, give me give me a perception check because you're sort of like you're sort of just doing a self-assessment. Yeah. Okay. Perception. 17. 17. Um, you're shorter. Rude, first of all. Second, I accept. Um, 
your beard is gone. Like, you look a little baby-faced. Yeah, yeah, you look a little baby-faced. Um, and you just, you, you're missing that gravitas. Got it? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, here is how the events of last night took place. You burned a name. And uh, players, I expect you to keep this uh, away from your characters. Your characters would have no way of knowing this. You burned through a name. Here is how the events of last night took place. The battle took place exactly how you, how you remembered it. Small tweaks found therein. Thoe was a beast. Uh, killed everything in her path and saved your life multiple times. Okay. You can choose whether that translates into a life debt in terms of the face side of things. Okay. But the new memory found therein is that this golden goddess wreathed in flames like saved your life a few times. But everything else stays as it is. Got it? Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, you guys all wake up in the morning. Uh, you have full rain. Um, I think uh, the minute your eyes start to flutter and you uh, awake and you start to sort of look about the area, uh, you uh, knock. It sort of comes over and it's just like, "Hey, pal, you're you're all right." Yeah, man, you kind of died last night. I died? Yeah. So that's what happened. I'm real sorry. I wasn't there. I, there was a big eyeball thing in the middle of the bar, and I... I'm real sorry. Man, you, you did what you could, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you killed whatever that thing was in the bar? Yeah, I mean, I hit it a lot, but... <laughs> okay. um, but Felring kind of did something with his boomstick, and it went kind of crazy. <laughs> so, um, but you, you, I heard you fought real well. It was something. That that adrenaline rush you get when you hit that, when you hit him for the first time. Knocks at, at one point like this huge lumbering beast of a of a half orc, uh, sort of like leans forward and just like gives you a small hug. And goes like, uh, I, I think I'm gonna go rest now that you're awake, okay? Yeah, thank you. I'm just gonna put like, my hand up and like, I'll, I'll probably just make my friends. Just, just go, go rest. Hey, don't forget, you're not defined by what you can do. You're defined by what you did do. Thank you. Try not to die, I guess. <laughs> and like, I walk out of the room. <laughs> Cool. Uh, you didn't uh, rest. You didn't need it, uh, but you took a short rest. Uh, everybody else, mark down a long rest on your sheet. Uh, cure um, uh, or regain those spell slots. You're gonna need them. Uh, um, my HP stays the same, right? I mean, your moment. HP stays the same. I'll take a look at raise the dead. Um, but chat. Um, uh, yeah, if anybody out there is familiar with Raise the Dead and wants to throw... Uh, this is great. I have access to the chat now a little bit better. Um, yeah, uh, uh, I think your HP stays yeah, the same. What are you doing with your mornings, gang? As you know that today is the day you sort of set off on your adventure. Uh, I mean, I would have been there for the whole conversation with Nock and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Mandrake's packed, so like he, he hasn't left your side, so... Knock does all this. He just doesn't know you that well. He, yeah, you know, yeah. Go like, okay, uh, cool. Thanks, dude. Thanks, sleeping dude. <laughs> like. um, so Mandrake would pull his pull his little teapot and like teacups out of his bag, pour him some tea, offer it to him, um, and then. You and I are cut from the same cloth. Well, Leather, do you at least have my back on this one? I do. But, if we aren't stronger, we have to be smarter. <laughs> well, it's, it's always easier when you're in the moment when you get to think about it. But you were in jeopardy. You were trying to make it out alive. 
Like the horde, <clears throat> outnumbered. It was the only thing I could think of. Or we could have both out. left. I told you from the very beginning that I would protect you no matter what. So I put myself in that position. I'm aware. But maybe every once in a while let me protect you. You're lucky you caught me in right now. <laughs> so I'll give way to that. We can't have you dying in the middle of a fight. Grim goes out in a blaze of glory. Not at the hands of some thief in the night. It is more than that. It was almost where it was. It, it feels different. It's just something feels different. I don't, I don't, I don't hear him anymore. Um, I'll motion to the reflection in the teacup and the, the reflection of the tea. You look different. I feel different. It's not a good different either. It's <laughs> There's that voice that's in my side of my head that, that eggs me on and keeps me going, and it's just dark. There's, there's nothing there anymore. Mandrake will, like, point at the new mark on his arm. I understand better than you might imagine. So is everyone getting new tattoos and not me? Or at least a guy dies. And <laughs> no, you've got one. We all got matched tattoos, and <laughs> I was dead, <clears throat> so... Did you get one of these? And he'll pull out the card. In through my stuff was when I <laughs> pull out said card. Do you know anything about this? <laughs> Aside from the scribbles on it? It's too much to decipher right now. I'm sorry. No, I, I just was wondering. I do know it didn't come from Cheshire. Mine came from the Jabberwock, then. <laughs> Something hit home. I don't know if he's uh, the card playing type. <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> anyway, at least with a sense of humor. <laughs> Rest, my friend. And he's just gonna just sulk back into his bed. <clears throat> okay, uh, Thor, are you doing anything with this uh, morning uh, before you leave? Yeah, I'm finding that. Uh, yeah. And he was in his normal spot on the roof. Um, listen, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to have another disagreement or anything, and, and, and I'm, I'm not here to be confrontational or aggressive in any way, because half the time when I speak to you about this particular subject, it, it turns into you saying that I'm yelling at you, <laughs> and, and I, and I'm really trying not to yell, and I don't mean to yell. But where did he come from? Or where did who come from? Ch chance. He, he came downstairs. He was the cleric. We were looking for a cleric. And he came downstairs and, and he healed Grimm. But he was not here before. And you went upstairs. And then you came downstairs. And he came downstairs. And where did he come from? No, I, I thought to think I want to make sure that I wasn't supposed to know something. Okay. Nope. Nope, you're good. Okay. We needed him. We did. So I did my best to make sure that happened. Thankfully, my best is pretty good. And when I trust you, I mean, I do. I, I, I trust you in, in some ways. It sounds stupid, but like more. More than I probably should for how long that I've known you. But you're hiding stuff. I mean, you're hiding a lot of stuff, and I don't know why. 
but I don't know why it's so important to hide as much as you do. Yeah. And not even mine, not even just the truth. Your truth, which is confusing to me. I kind of spent my life in libraries. <laughs> so, you Where know. Where books are written by the people who survived. Mm. So their truth, not even the actual truth most of the time. Yeah, but a lot of times if you read a lot of books with a lot of different perspectives, you can at least get to the closest version of it. I think that's important to at least try, right? That's sort of the thing about the truth, isn't it? It just requires itself, whereas a lie requires infrastructure. Okay, you so tell then a lie, and then you have to tell another lie to hold that lie up, and another to get those together, and then more and more. Why don't you believe that I'm telling you the truth? We need a chance in these years. I don't believe you've lied to me. I believe you're telling me the truth. I just, I think that. You're hiding things. I know you're hiding things. And and maybe it's that you don't trust me. Which hurts. But I understand. But I wish you did. I called it. That's how he got here. You, you called him? So you can call anybody? I have the ability to send messages to everybody. No, well, that wasn't a message. People. That was like like making him like show up That's right true. there. <laughs> That's true. Not everybody, but But certain people. Some people. There's a connection required there. Because I don't want to go OC here. Yep. Can I roll for being able to know what that connection is? She's been so focused. Give me on insight anything. check. Yeah, because she's been so focused on it, but I also don't want to meta. Um, probably not. Um, that's like a twelve. You 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 know that there's something. He's 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 almost handing it to her at this point, where it's like he's yeah. it, it's essentially like I have a way to to call yeah. certain people and. You call someone by using their name, but you don't you don't know the specifics okay. of it. Um, but I know that, that the connection is, is probably through this I, I don't want to that I've been Is over. it a soft pitch from yeah. him? Like it's, it's a it's sorry. a slow pitch. This is sorry. it's hard for me to trust you, but after yeah. what I saw <laughs> no, no, no. last night, this okay. is my best. Yeah. You realize that this is the best you're going to get okay. from him. Thank you. You're welcome. I haven't not giving you my name because I don't trust you. Okay. Then why? Admittedly, I haven't asked for it again, so... It's true. Uh, because I don't know if there are consequences to it that I don't know about that could be bad. And I know that right now I, I owe so much to the Caterpillar and I have a job and, and now the Cheshire is involved in that job and and others. Have I told? Has she told him that Anansi yet about that conversation? <laughs> okay. No wait. No, you did. Okay, and Anansi. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. And there's a good chance that one or more of those mm, people mm, are going to be upset with the amount of communication I've had with everyone else, and I don't want to make it worse. I'm not upset. Okay. Your name is your own. Okay. Uh, there's a soft knock at the door coming to outside. And you see a, a sort of still somewhat bloodied, black-eyed, um, lovable bard bartender uh, as Bob sort of comes up to the roof and he says, um, Hey, kids, it's, uh, it's breakfast time. Um, and uh, we need to have a little meeting about the to break in from a monster that almost killed us. Oh, there were multiple monsters. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. I, I know, dear. It's just, it's, it, I'm, 
still hungover. So if you could um, make your way to the bar, that would be great. Uh, he'll summon them. Uh, you doing anything with your morning? Just kind of checking in on him? Yeah, she would have checked in on, on Grim a few times. Just peek in, make sure he's not dead again. Peek in. <laughs> yeah. Is he awake? Oh, okay, not right now. Oh, <laughs> he's talking to Mandra. Okay, sure. bye. Hey, I just want to, okay, okay, I got that way. Do you guys need anything? Snacks? Yeah. And the regular Orange slices? Or what? Uh, uh, Bob would come in and summon you as well. He'd be like, cup, cup. It's not that kind of party, bro. Uh, wow. I can hear it in full, so. Is it back in that? Uh, and just basically be like, dear, it's, uh, it's time for a little meeting downstairs. If you're okay for it. Okay for it. Well, why wouldn't I be? Long rest. My hair looks great. Um, I <laughs> did something bad. You did. I did. Bob. I know. Um, however, I would really like to talk to you, but I I don't feel like now is a good time. So maybe when you get back from your little trip. Bob. Day. We don't keep secrets from each other. I, that's <laughs> true, unless it's, unless it could hurt the other. Did you hurt someone? No, no. Well, yes, probably quite frequently, but no, not, not tonight. Not yet. Last night. Well, the the thing in the this is complicated. No, I. Uh, let's talk when we get back. And and but just don't let me forget. Okay. Okay. It's going to be like fun. It. I know you don't like it. But let's talk. Okay. To the meeting then? Yes, I'm going to go get Nick's first. How's my hair? She'll like scrunch it up a little bit and like put it behind his ear and then like fix his, his outfit and then just like schmutz real fast and better. All right, and he'll go and knock on your door. For the first time, Nick's is actually up and awake. He's already downstairs. Son of a... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Bob will head downstairs. Uh, there's a table set up, a large sort of spread. Uh, you see is a... a, a Odd-looking Grim sort of joins the table. He's missing his, his sort of facial hair that he's become sort of known for, this perpetual be beard, five o'clock <laughs> shadow. No, and uh, makes his way to the table. He's just He just sort of nods at everybody and sort of walks with a bit of a limp as he's... Um, he looks, his skin looks pale, uh, you know, he, he doesn't look like uh, fully rested, and Felrin is sort of pacing about uh, the table, uh, looking at uh, looking at a little notebook, and, and okay, the gnome um, sort of adjusts goggles and, and looks about the space, and he too is, is walking uh, with a bit of a limp. His left foot is... Uh, is bandaged to the point where he doesn't look like he's wearing a shoe or anything, uh, but he's leaving a little spots of blood on the floor as he walks and, and things of that sort. And, and Bob, who's sitting behind the bar, is just sort of smiling, smiling, and then like magics the little spots of blood on the floor away, like occasionally. Um, and uh, and but Felrin sees all of you and 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 immediately runs up to you. Grin, and, and you're all right. Everything is is is, is really good. You you look you're alive. I'm, I'm alive. Yes. Um, huh. uh, I, I'm so sorry. Uh, this is a safe place, and, and, and it's, it's supposed to be a safe place, and I, I don't know how they got past my defenses, and I'm, I'm so sorry. I, uh, it, I, a dark magic. So uh, it won't happen again. Or I can try to make that promise, but, um, but I will make sure. Do you know what this is? And I'll point to... Yeah. Crap. I have to play this right. Um, he goes, no. But uh, he pulls out a magnifying glass and activates the magic in the magnifying glass and takes a look at your arm. Uh, after taking the magnifying glass out and activating the magnifying glass, uh, some of you that know magical items might know exactly what this magnifying glass is. He looks at it and uh, he goes, um, 
I don't recognize the language, um, but uh, but looking through the magnifying glass, it's able to cut through. Um, the symbol uh, says silence. Um, it looks like you've been marked. Um, there are such curses that will take effect and 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 graft themselves to a, a person's spirit. This happened last night? Yes. Um, Did anyone else receive a mark uh, uh, akin to this? Everyone. <laughs> I would just, I just hold up my arm. Everyone. Not, not you. <laughs> not me. Were you staying in your room last night? Uh, I was on the roof when they came in. You were on the roof. Uh, so if they did send someone for you, they may have just appeared in your room and not known that you weren't there. Understood. Um, I, I can do some research if you'd like. And, and of course, if you want to postpone the trip, I, I completely understand. It's just, um, have you noticed any sort of changes? Uh, anything you're not able to do or able to do? Is anyone spouting horns? A couple of things, actually. Yes. I can't speak to Cheshire anymore. Oh. Uh... Well, that might explain the silence. It could be a silencing of things going out or coming in. Also, and he'll pull out the Kyle cap. This cursed item, it, it was passed to me by a blood oath. Uh, yeah, I've been there. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, uh, yeah, uh, leave the cap. Uh, I, I'll do some research. I'll try to have some answers for you by the time you get back. Uh, I assume that you all have friends in high places <laughs> or, or low places both in between um and they just didn't want you speaking to the high places and the low places what happened to your hair it's the mark i'm gonna close my eyes and look at him okay do i see the chameleon uh yeah Please, okay, mask me I, out. <laughs> the, I the DM try. masochists seem to say. <laughs> say sadist? I no, want to try casting Dispel Magic on the tattoo Absolutely. on my arm. Yes. Um, because I can specify a magical effect or an object. Totally. I'm going to step back since I know that spell. Cool. Uh, you guys watch <laughs> as Zoe gets that look in her eyes of, oh, oh, oh. So if because I can't specify, patch, I know it's it's 120 foot range, two, but I can specify back. an effect, so it shouldn't affect anything else. Where that where part. do uh, Thoe's magical powers derive from? Uh, the earth, right? As a druid. Yeah. And she uh, is a worshiper of the caterpillar, correct? Right. Correct. Yes. Go ahead and cast that spell. Oh no! Oh crud! Crud! Uh, crud! Uh, do it. Leaves the area. Yeah. Back up! Back up! Back up! <laughs> cool! 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 Spells cast. Cool, give me a constitution saving throw. Uh, that is a 14. Uh, you fail. Uh, you take uh, two points of psychic damage. Ouch. You get a little splitting headache. So the magic seems to go towards the mark and uh, seems to run out of steam. You almost okay. feel the magic sort of grounded in, 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 in a way. We don't need them. No, but I needed to have a conversation at some point, and no, I figured don't. it would be better better at least to know if it worked, right? You don't, though, dear. You follow him. Cheshire, how many times have you spoken with him? You can see Indigo. No, actually, I, I still can. It's not really affecting me the same way. Exactly, you can still see it. That's what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> We can all see indigo. No, that's not true. I just want it known. I can really just, see it. Just yeah. They chose us. You guys? They picked us. Right, no, I just needed to have a very practical conversation, but that's okay. I don't have to right now. But it, was, it wasn't it was more of a seeking guidance. It was just a practical, okay, here's how I may have screwed up conversation. Right, right, right. So, and you, you can know. come back to that, but right now we have to go save somebody. Um, and we don't need to speak with them to know what they want. In all fairness, I'd rather her try this out here than when we're in the middle of a battle. Um, Nix, before we 
go. Um, the 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 doorknob. The, yes. How, how does that work? I know that you did some 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 investigation. Yes. You said it might help us while if we're there. Things go poorly. We might be able to use it to get back. What do you mean? Like it makes portals or something? Possibly. I don't want to make promises when I don't know exactly what it might do. But I have a good feeling that if things go bad, it could be our saving grace. Will it only work if you use it, or will it work with anybody using it? Because if it will work if anybody uses it, should gonna, we all know how? I'm going to take it out and go over to Enwin. You're the only one without a mark. And I'm going to hand him the doorknob. And what exactly do you want me to do with it? Hold on to it. Things go bad. Try and open the door. All right. He, yeah. yeah. Mark that down in your inventory, please. Put a little tiny asterisk by it if you are able to. Um, uh, Felrin says, uh, uh, take the take the day, uh, uh, take the morning. Um, uh, whenever you're ready to go, I have everything set up in the lab. Uh, I'll hand you the amulets, and, and everyone, uh, you should all be able to go. Uh, I, I, I haven't forgotten. Um, uh, so, uh, the money th that you gave me, uh, yes. uh, a, a little something uh, special to, to go with you. Um, I, I hope you don't mind. I, I tend to go off the rails a little bit when it comes to... Um, Coming up with fun, uh, interesting ideas, and thanks for letting me go a little crazy. It, sure. This kind of helped uh, calm me down. So um, this is a Mach 2 of a design. Um, I, I, I shrunk it, and I took away the wings, um, but I, I think you're going to like it. Um, it. It plays into strengths, and he will uh, reach into his bag, and he'll you'll hear this clicking sound, and then you'll see this tiny, mechanical, steampunk chameleon crawl out of the bag um it sort of like crawls up out of the bag and just a little bit of smoke comes out of the ears and it'll turn around and sort of like he'll go it's okay it's okay it's okay and he'll, he'll pick up the little chameleon and put it on his hand and when he puts it on his hand it disappears completely and he goes come on and he'll flick it and it'll come back and sort of appear regular and um, he goes, I, I, I got you something. You ready? You see that? That's that's Nix. You're going to go hang out with him for a little bit, okay? And he will walk over gently and place this sort of, like, uh, steampunk mechanical automaton mm -hmm. chameleon that sort of crawls up on your shoulder and sits there and uh, and just sort of, like, sits there. Occasionally little puffs of smoke will come out. You'll hear little clicks and whir whirs and, and things of that sort. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, you can name him whatever you wish. Uh, I, I I was just calling him. Um, uh, I was calling him Pascal for a while, like uh, in, in in terms of that, uh, just having him run around and stuff. Uh, Pascal's a very unique creation. Um, that I spent a lot of time attuning to and and worshiping the goddess Ayun, um, and uh, I I wanted to come up with something that would help channel positive energy so here, here's some great features about pascal while pascal is connected to you and on your shoulder um, he kind of feeds off your energy um, he is invincible he is invulnerable um, he cannot be damaged in any sort of way but you can take him out and sort of send him forward and, and investigate around but do so at your own risk i could probably repair him if you collected the parts but it would take some gold yeah. um, pascal has the ability to tap into the goodness inherent in you next um, you're doing this for all the right reasons. You're saving the love of your life. And, and Pascal feeds off of that energy. Um, it, so it's only going to work with somebody that's sort of good alignment. Um, uh, so, uh, But Pascal, uh, once a day, is going to allow you to channel that sort of goodness within you and um, buff a spell. Um, when you cast a spell, Nyx, you're, 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 yes, you're reciting from a book and you're channeling all the inward sort of capabilities about you. But once a day, you can choose to channel some of that goodness that Pascal picks up just by being in your proximity day by day by day and augment a spell um, to mixed results. <laughs> um, it, it is a work in progress, but it is going to add a bit of radiance 
to those spells, a, a bit of the goodness inherent in the in the good that you're doing. And I figured, release the good uh, as you're as you're going to hell. No better friend to have than somebody that sort of allows you to access that. Yes. So. Um, if it's an offensive spell, it might do radiant damage. Um, if it's a defensive spell, such as your mage armor, it could have um, unforeseen side effects. Uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, if it's a portal spell, you can try it, and we can see what happens. Um, but uh, like I said, it, you're basically just giving it a little bit of oomph. Uh, and it's a, it's a once a day, he's going to need a long rest after you use that to, to sort of do that ability again. So, um, Pascal... Um, yeah. And Pascal can work with anyone here. Uh, I'm not insinuating that n none of you are good. Uh, I'm just saying that <laughs> you would have to be a good person in order to do so. But, he, but he's yours, and he's looks like he's already bonded with you. I appreciate it so much. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, thank you for allowing me to, to go crazy. And sometimes the best inventions are uh, those that are just done sort of with free reign, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm heading to the workshop uh, once again. I'm sorry. Um, hey, um, we're blood brothers now. We all fought uh, together, and I have friends here, but I feel like you guys have reached another echelon of that. So um, uh, don't worry about paying rent anymore. I mean, you can. It would help with the upkeep and stuff, but as long as you guys need a place to stay, I'm sure you'll find a place. But as as long as you're in this town, you're here. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Belvin. Yeah. Um, I could put a bed on the roof if you want. Uh, I don't need to sleep. So. <laughs> I'm worried about it. Yeah, me neither. That's not true. I really do. Uh, I'm going to go to the workshop, and uh, and Felrin will just sort of toddle off and head to the workshop, uh, leaving you um, your mechanical friend. Uh, he is not loaded onto D&D Beyond yet, because I'm having trouble homebrewing a creature, like a beast that you can add as a yeah. buddy, but we'll, I'll get some sort of facsimile. It may be an amulet, but um, yeah, that's your, that's your, but once a day, you're going to augment it. It's going to be radiant energy, and it, it, depending on which spell you cast it on. Interesting. Can't be used when you're casting through an item, however, so like you can't superimpose the amulet with Pascal or like Gotcha. Along those lines, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, you guys kind of have a little bit of privacy, uh, um, but the he's ready to go whenever you are. Okay. The Grim is he's just gonna just walk over to uh, Mandrake, put his hand on his shoulder, and you know, give him a squeeze, and he's just gonna walk upstairs and just go lay down. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, he doesn't say anything. Um, do you Irish exit? Later. Um, oh, no. Well, that's not good. <laughs> I will say everybody finishes lunch, and everybody finishes, and... Oh, buddy. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> um, Grim's going through some stuff, and he's having some issues, and so... For the time being, uh, we say goodbye to Grim. Um, he Irish exited. It's it, within his character. It's within his sort of abilities. Um, he, you guys go to check on him, and he, is there, there? I don't think there's any note. I don't think there's anything like that. I think he just he packed up his stuff and then left. Um, so he's just gone. He's, he's not in the tavern. His stuff is gone. No, the no bed goodbye. is the, the bed is made. He did not say goodbye. Grim did a little hand thing. He said he, he wanted to go rest. He wanted to go take care of him some stuff, and he just went. He, are we are we all together still? Like, would we all be? We I think are. I think yeah. eventually, like yeah. somebody would f that. figure it out, okay. and then everybody would rejoin together before you left. Cool. Well, what's really great about this is we brought him back to life, so I can kill him myself. Dang. I mean, if I just came back from the dead, the last place I'd want to go is hell. It's not that he left. He didn't say goodbye. Maybe that's the whole thing to focus on, babe. Maybe he just needs some time. Until his week. We can find him. We, we can find him. We just... Maybe he just needs some time. I know he needs time. 
point that bothers me is that he didn't say goodbye. I would have given him all the time in the world. The thing is, is that he just... So stubborn. He didn't say goodbye because he knows he'll be back. Or that he wouldn't be able to leave if he did. Or that him not being ready to do this for whatever reason might hold us back in worrying about him from going. And he knew it was important for us to go. Can we go to hell, please? I, I, I do need a moment. I'm gonna go down and do my kit. Bartholomew? Yeah! Yes. <laughs> I was hoping you'd remember. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yes, uh, so you open up the, the, the little kit in the somber moment. Everybody sort of gathered upstairs, and, and Bartholomew was working on uh, a present for you. Yes. And, uh, and he, uh, he's like, all right, well, hello, how was your evening? I know that you brought up someone who's died, and you were trying to fix it. Did you fix it? I did not fix it, but it's fixed nonetheless. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I'm I'm crying. Not now, Bartholomew. What do you have for me? I'm not a monster, you know. I'm just a spirit of intellect. Sometimes it's hard to people when you don't have a body. But I do remember what it's like to lose friends. And for that, I am deeply sorry. I find it hard to believe that you ever had a friend, Bartholomew. But... Well, I did. His name was... Stephen. <laughs> and Stephen was... a human man, and he wore a hat. Mm. And a brown... shirt. Black pants. I'm just describing you. I did not have a friend named Stephen. Here is your potion. I finished it last <laughs> night. Uh, and he hands you over a uh, a potion that seems to be fizzing a little bit. Uh, it's a, um, a odd sort of uh, green color that seems to fizz and softly bubble. And uh, as uh, as you go over towards where the um, uh, little rack is of potions, as you reach for it, it sort of floats up into your hand without you reaching for it. Okay, I'm wearing my ring. Yes. Uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, after rolling on a random chart and then laughing uproariously, oh, no. is a potion of flying. Okay. When you drink this potion, you gain a flying speed equal to your walking speed for one hour, and you can hover. If you're in the air, when the potion wears off, Eric Bridges, listen to me. If you are in the air, when the potion wears off, you will fall, unless, unless you have some other means of staying afloat. Got it. Okay. This potion's clear, uh, of slightly green liquid floats at the top of its container and has cloudy white impurities drifting in it. Got it. Do you understand? I understand that if I am flying... Bad things happen if it wears off. Okay. I'm a little concerned about these cloudy white impurities. <laughs> uh, Magnus says, chug it down, and then Dream Girl 42 says, which you should probably never land. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Bartholomew wishes you a goodbye and, and, and says, Would you like me to work on anything else during the interim? Um, Do you have any skills outside of potion making? I mean, it's a potion lab. It depends on what you're looking for. I can research. Could I just need a, permission. Could you figure out a code? Yes, I suppose so. He'll take out his card. You bastard. <laughs> I did not expect this. Um, All right, hold up the card. He'll prop it against the book stand. All right, done. And it says? It is a very simple code. And it is? Uh, find Cheshire. Mm -hmm. The first letter in every word spells out words. Well, 
my friend dying and all, I haven't had a lot of, had a lot of time to think about this. When I was a baby, I did this code before. When you were a baby, the kingdom of wonder was a stone next to a tree. Goodbye, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, a little, he's a little flummoxed. Bring me back some brimstone, please. Oh, could you do something nice with brimstone? No, I just like the smell. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything down there you could brew something nice out of? You bring me anything you find it, from the hells, the nine hells, and I will have fun experimenting. Fantastic. We're going to all night. Yes. All right. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, Mandrake comes back up. He's holding a cl- sort of clear, uh, uh, greenish, uh, little white impurity spread throughout this potion bottle and, and is uh, joining everyone. Are we ready? We're ready. A soft knock at the door to Felrin's workshop, and you go in, and Felrin is uh, surrounded. Uh, the room has been transformed. What was once a cluttered workshop filled with gears and the um, um, small sort of whirling automatons has been cleared almost completely, and every wall surface is covered in white arcane sigils that have seemed to be traced in chalk. Concentric circles move about. Uh, from inward to outward, each written in a different sort of script and language. Uh, Felrin is off in one corner, a piece of chalk still in his hand, uh, fast asleep. Um, But as the door sort of opens, uh, he drops the chalk and pulls out his boomstick and and, and apologizes and puts the boomstick to the side and says, All right, are are we ready to go? Yes, okay. Uh, uh, Head towards the center of the circle, please. Um, now, here's the deal. Um, uh, uh, hell is, is, is different uh, for everyone, and, and based on the plane that you originate on. Um, I, I have uh, sort of given up a planar travel for a couple of reasons uh, here, so I have never been there, nor do I know many that have been there and uh, returned. Um, you hear various stories uh, based on the type of people that have gone. I happen to do a little bit of research. Um, uh, uh, be careful when dealing with demons and devils. Um, I, I do know that uh, when they travel to this plane, they can't be killed. Like, they just return to that plane. But if they die in hell, they're dead for realsies. Um, so they're a little bit more cuff, cutthroat and, and, and a little bit more wily. You will need your cunning about you. Um, the, 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 the amulet works, and it takes all of you there. However, I don't know exactly where it's going to take you. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I'm trying to aim for like uh, uh, multiple layers on layers. Like I'm hoping to bring you to a point that's that's relatively safe and, and I think I've I've got it close to that. Um, but but just be prepared for whatever may appear at you. Uh, two questions. Uh, how, how can we track down, I mean, if there's so many layers and it's so big, how, how do we know where we're going to try to get close to him? Uh, um, do you think this could help? <laughs> it's one of my, uh, yes, yeah, God, yeah, uh, that could work. I don't know how it's going to react in a different plane. And it's short term, pal, like it'll take you, it doesn't take you to what you want. It takes you to what you need. Yeah. Um, and, and so just use it, but I don't know where it's going to take you. Uh, but p- perhaps if you use it right when you get there, it- it'll at least point you towards the next step. Okay. And, and, and how do we get back? Um, the amulet. Uh, it, it's 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 plugged in here. Uh, you, you can use the amulet, and, and I explain to you. Uh, seven people, tops, right? Uh, d- yeah. d- d- you guys got five. Where's Grim? He's not coming. Uh, uh, it's smart. He can rest and, and stay here as long as he wants. So, um, okay. Uh, so, seven. Uh, one more question. Yeah. Do, do you happen to have a way that we can tell where we are when we arrive? Uh, look, 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 look around. Really, <laughs> just study the space. And, I, I, guys, I'm so sorry. This is unfamiliar territory, even for me. Like, you're, you're, you're going to a place that living beings don't necessarily go to and the environment isn't necessarily like built for them not only that you're going to do like a rescue mission and i'm, I'm getting some anxiety about she's this place like, her hand on her shoulder, like, <sighs> yes keep getting us there that's all we can ask of you and i'm getting you home and that's more than we can ask of you <laughs> but hey 
What a great story. Right? Uh, head towards the center of the circle. She's going to lean down and give him a kiss on the cheek. And then... He's going to melt. He's going to melt a lot. Mm -hmm. um, good luck. You got this. Don't die. You'll have a home to come back to. I think. And uh, three, two, one. Uh, he will uh, shove his hands down to the hardwood floor. As he shoves his hands down to the hardwood floor, you see his eyes alight with a white sort of fire. Uh, this fire seems to crackle out from his fingers, and the circles will ignite, leading inward to the innermost circle. As they do, you feel the magic building in this amulet of planar travel. And as you feel this culmination of magical energy sort of coalesce and center into the point of the innermost circle, you see Felrin. Uh, sort of look forward, the lightning-shaped scar on his eye blazing with a, a light. And for a minute, Felrin is replaced with the image of a woman. A, a woman that is standing sort of bathed in light and in, in radiant energy, holding a book in her left hand and holding a set of scales in the other. And uh, as she sort of looks at the group, she nods and the light disappears and you feel your stomachs yanked almost as if the center of your being is tied to a string and that string is pulled and you are in exorably pulled forward through space through time through 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 multiple multiple different dimensions as you as you look about you you see a uh, what looks to be a plane consumed of all fire you see a plane of strange shapes you see a, a glimpse of that world you glimpse through the portal with strange mechanical beings uh, that, that seem to be going on four wheels and, and these large, large buildings. Um, you see a room with two, two tables and five humanoid figures sitting at a table. Um, uh, and you see all of these different things running past you at extreme speeds and energy until all of a sudden you feel cold, hard ground underneath your feet. Um, you are in a darkened space. Uh, the air is humid. Um, you feel cold dirt underneath your feet. All of you are on all fours, sort of breathing heavily, and it takes you a second to regain your bearings. It's dark, dark, dark? It's dark. Which of you has... I have dark vision. Dark vision, okay. Uh, for those of you that don't have dark vision, it's fine. Uh, Thoe Sire produces a small flame. Um, you are in a odd space for several reasons. Give me perception checks, everyone, as you start looking about the space. Eight. Five. Seven. Seven. Five, seven, eight. Thirteen. Thirteen. And nine. Perfect. Yes, love it. <laughs> uh, Five, seven, eight. I have dark vision, but I'm doing nothing together. You're supposed to have gone to what you believe to be a hell dimension. Okay? The place where lost souls go, uh, where heroes are damned and sort of sent here to this area. Um, uh, those that, that, that fell down a bad path, you have no idea what to expect. For those of you that studied the sort of the afterlife, or those of you that worshipped a particular god, that, that, that some of the gods had libraries built. Uh, the, the Jabberwock had... A, had spanning fields where you would hunt sort of all day and sort of be absorbed into the hunt. Cheshire, this sort of light and sound and playful sort of atmosphere, but this place looks mundane. There's a few wooden crates off to the side. There's a small door that leads out of this room. Who got the highest? That was like a 13? It's eerily similar to the room you just left. Just in layout alone. Does this look familiar to anybody? When he says that, you can all confirm mm -hmm. that this looks eerily similar to the room you just left. It looks like Felrin's, but it feels off. Mandrick's gonna walk to those crates. Okay. And start digging. See if there's anything of use. Give me an investigation check. Sixteen. 
You start digging through the crates, start looking through, and um, as you dig through the crates, uh, you're finding discarded bottles. Um, no labels on the bottles. You're seeing sawdust. Um, you see small creatures that seem to be sort of like chittering around, like insects, of the likes of which you have never seen before, which seem to sort of, as you dig your hands in and Thoey kind of moves a little closer, disappear with these little puffs of smoke as you get closer. Um, uh, doing these little like bursts of sulfuric smell that seem to hit your nose. Um, you find empty bottles, you find refuse, some rags, uh, some looks like some old robes that somebody discarded. I'm gonna pick up the robes and just put them in my bag. Okay. You've got some soiled sort of robes that you can throw that you can add to your inventory. Looks okay. like things that have been used and thrown away. Bugs killed. I figure if this was anything like Velvin's, maybe something useful. Discarded magical items are still magical items. With the way Felrin is about day, would he have shown her where he throws his like I'm done with this invention pile? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he kind of, you kind of look around the space. Uh, I think as soon as you recognize it, the same door that led you in, there was a sort of, it's a back workshop in the bar. Uh, and it's sort of tucked away, but it's made that way for a reason. So the smells and the sound, the smoke and stuff like that. There's no mechanical bits. Uh, the, the, the cogs, the random sort of oil stains that you were used to, any of you that walked into the workshop, are not there. It's not his workshop, and that's confirmed as you start digging through the space. I think as you all start exploring, you do hear the s sounds coming from the other side of the door, but you're not seeing any of the mechanical stuff. We need to move forward. The, the, we could be here for, for weeks. We don't know where he is. Let's at least check the door. Maybe we start with what Nix is holding? I don't know if that's a good idea until we're outside, or at least have our bearings. I agree. That's fair. The one time it was so. Uh, I have an idea. OK. It sounds like something's outside the door. OK. It's dark in here. Mm -hmm. Not that dark. I mean, dark enough. And I'll like reach in and pull out some of the, the blocks. Okay. I could scatter them about in front of the door. If someone opens the door, at least we do a little damage up front. Like outside the door? No, just inside the door. So when we open it, if we're charged. Okay. You creep over to the door. You've got the handful of sort of blocks that uh, when you step on them, they hurt more than anything mm -hmm. in the entire universe, yep. especially when it's dark outside. Mm -hmm. um, you creep over to the door, uh, and you just sort of slowly open the door. Well, I would I would put them on the floor. In front of the door. In front Perfect. of the door. Yep. I would motion to Thoe okay. to put the light behind her or get rid of it, if possible. I can do that. Okay, you go to open the door. Does it open in or does it open out? It opens out. Out. Okay, so is there a ledge above the door? No. No? It's just a bare flat wall. Kind of a, there's a tiny, tiny ledge, like a little, but there's not like a home alone, I can put a bucket here. No, but is there enough for a foothold? For someone with a very high acrobatic? <laughs> Give me an acrobatics check <laughs> as you try to put a foothold above the door. Oh, that would be a 29. Okay, yeah. You are balanced above <laughs> the door. Okay, so I balance above the door. Okay. I reach down, pull the knob, Okay. and then push. So I'm above the door, push the door open. Okay. You push the door open, the door swings out uh, to a bustling bar. Uh, that seems to be filled with patrons of makes and different models. Uh, you see, it's uh, almost similar to, but not quite unlike uh, Felrin's or, or Bayard's Brew, uh, um, as you see dwarven men that seem to be carousing in the back corner. You see elves of different uh, makes uh, that, that seem to be sort of being emo off in the corner. Um, you see... Um, different uh, sort of humans that uh, they're telling uh, stories and being somewhat gregarious. 
um, and you see a pleasant bar scene. I mean, it doesn't have the accoutrement. Uh, they, uh, the, the alcohol seems to be that of a moonshine variety. Cups are haphazard. Uh, you see many people drinking out of what looks to be cups composed of bone or skulls and not sort of having any qualms. Uh, some of them even walk up to this gregarious bartender who uh, greets them with a smile and pours a little bit of alcohol into outstretched hands. Uh, what does this bartender look like? Yo, yo, different around here. I haven't seen you. You low in water. Um, what does this bartender look like? He is short. He's a halfling. His hair is a mess because that's just kind of how he is, and he has a little, uh, little squirrel that just kind of runs about from shoulder to shoulder and down the bar and kind of just being like, you know, wiping up spills and you know, he's just. Yeah, your average looking little uh, halfling. So when nothing ran through the door, Mandrick would have like hung from his toes, mm. gathered the bricks up, yeah. put them in back in his bag, and then like flipped down, walked through. Yeah. Uh, you were greeted <laughs> uh, by uh, the the look of a small halfling with a giant smile and disheveled hair, um, who starts. Um, uh, who starts pouring uh, drinks into containers that he pulls out from underneath the bar um, as he welcomes you to uh, a bar set in the middle of the underworld. Um, and as he begins to pour drinks, uh, you have all reached uh, your first stop in this adventure. Um, and uh, we're going to take a quick intermission right here as we get our bearings. And we allow our new player to sort of get his bearings and we welcome him back. Um, but yes, um, yeah, we'll see you guys in just uh, 10 minutes. And then we're going to continue on with this adventure and we can learn a little bit about this hell dimension, which is based off of the, <laughs> uh, I'm going to nerd out a little bit. This is based off of the script written by Bill Murray and Harold Ramis for Ghostbusters 3 that was never done, uh, where their version of hell was exactly like our world, but everything is bad. You always get stuck in traffic. The, the, the weather, it's always raining. Always it's, it's, it's always like a rough day, but people tend to find the happy spots in the bad, and there's no better person to find that. So in this version of the underworld, uh, not everything is what it appears to be, but the layout will be what you are used to in the mouth. Okay. Um, however, it is this dimension has been implanted over it. Um, this is your one, and I repeat, one safe bastion in this plane. I will say you are able to pick this up from here. This is the one sort of place, because you are level eight, and you should not be really going to hell dimensions until you're a little bit higher in level. So I'm telling you now, once you leave these doors, it, it has the potential to go very, very poorly. And you pick that up after having general conversations with Fix and Dash, okay? We will return after those conversations take place in just a few minutes, but we will see you guys in just a few.
Oh, and we're back. Oh, you. My God. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, and thank you so much, Icky, for 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 your Twitter blast and, and things of that sort. We love you so much. Uh, heart heart for you, Indigo Connects. Uh, can't thank you enough. Um, I can't, yeah, I, apparently we're at 491, gang. Nine yes! away. Uh, so nine close. followers so away close. from our 500 uh, stream, Shit. which is going to be a little cray-cray. Um, and uh, a crazy prize pack, including... Uh, what I think is going to be, uh, I'm going to talk to the mods, but what I think is going to be a personalized uh, uh, glass stein that you've seen before with like oh, a, like, like, like one like of those right one? there. A special, Similar. a specialty oh. indigo chameleon, one of a kind limited edition gold coin um, hey. that is actually metal. Um, a very unique dice set, uh, which we are making, and I think some other fun merch as well, which is happening at the 500 uh, follower giveaway. So, air horn, Icky, ah. Icky, we cannot thank you enough. Gosh, thank you. There is always a spot at our table for you. Actually, I Icky, and this is a weird time, uh, maybe come play or come DM or or any of those things. I need to get a, a, a Talking Heads uh, game going, Bob, but we'd love to have, and all of our friends that's, uh, that are far, far away. Um, but uh, let's... You know what? We had a one shot set in Neverland. Let's do a net uh, or Wonderland. Let's do a Never Shot. <gasps> Let's do the other side of the continent. Uh, I think we'll do a Never Shot. Uh, so uh, yeah, if you guys want to, uh, I will throw up a rec recruitment and we'll find that Monday. Uh, Monday, I can announce it now. Is uh, Grim is searching for himself and uh, he's trying to find himself. So he has a cast of characters that is going to help him find himself, and I got the cast confirmed a few minutes ago. Um, it will be uh, our good, good paladin buddy, Zero. Hey! Uh, it'll be Dull, it'll be Trevor, it'll be uh, a talking uh, uh, alcoholic robot. Uh, yes. uh, <laughs> um, yes. um, people, uh, yeah, so a few individuals that, that are there, and, uh, and uh, a couple more Texas, the bar. Hey, Our co country bar, <laughs> so we'll, we'll get a couple of different you. people. That, I know you. <laughs> the, uh, that'll be doing some fun stuff. So, uh, so tune in for that as Grim sort of goes out and finds his his purpose uh, and his new spirit guide, uh, which I'm terrified to introduce to all of you uh, because Chris uh, helped write it, and it's it's different. <laughs> So uh, no, it's good, uh, uh, but it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. So so tune in for that. Uh, this coming next uh, Sunday, uh, Grim finds himself. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, uh, it'll be great. Uh, okay, uh, you guys are are in um, righteousness. Um, the the bar in the middle of hell. Um, uh, righteousness is a, uh, a small ball bar that seems to be. Uh, hid, I know, I see your brain working, a small bar that seems to be hidden away uh, in the in corners of hell. Um, your bartender has introduced himself as Fix. He is a druid. Uh, he's got a small squirrel companion that seems to be chittering about and running up his shoulder. Um, after a few drinks and some uh, amiability, um, Fix uh, he introduces himself as one of the very few uh, uh, creatures that is residing here in the underworld that's alive. Um, and as he points this out to you, you will notice uh, some of the other denizens of the bar, while they seem to be drinking and carousing, have a purple, a purple chain locked. All of them have it in different places. Uh, but you'll notice the same sort of, it almost looks like a, a spectral um, cuff or, or, or something along those lines that you would find on their, on their hand uh, or... Uh, or like their leg, or their ankle, or their neck. Um, all of them uh, in the bar seem to have this this chain that is uh, that is a purple spectral cuff uh, sort of wrapped around them. Um, uh, he has explained that he came here to rescue his good buddy Dash, and that uh, and that uh, it, once he found him, Dash and Fix uh, decided to set up shop here and provide a little bit of life. I know this doesn't matter for day, but sure. Dash is alive? Uh, Dash, you don't see a purple chain around him. And, and as far as you know, it looks like Dash is alive and Fix is also alive. So, um, but you see these sort of different purple cuffs. Sorry, Hillary. Uh, you see these different <laughs> purple cuffs sort of like uh, 
on these different creatures in this hmm. space. Hello. Hi. How are you? It's I like your squirrel. <laughs> nice. He's dash. He's he's a real nice guy. I want to get to know. He's not quite talking about now, but he's he's all right. Uh-huh. Might give you all something to drink. I mean, you you're more lively than so what we have here in the bar already. But something something strong for you. Perhaps ale, or whiskey, or something. Sure. Yes, please. But which would which would it be? Ale or whiskey? Oh, whiskey for sure. Okay. Yes. And, and, and you you guys, ale or whiskey? Um, I'd like water, please. <laughs> <laughs> or something <laughs> like I don't. Well, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I gave two options, and you provided a third. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. <laughs> um, ale or whiskey? Um. We don't get many living people around here. So it's just, more. it's we're on a very important mission, and we need to focus on our mission, and I'm a little bit worried about having alcoholic beverages when we need to focus on the things that we need to do. He's just walking, grabbing the ball from behind the bar, and just walking right over it. <laughs> You're having an adventure? We are. <laughs> well, it's not like an adventure, like, oh, this is fun, but it's like, like we have to rescue someone. You understand what the definition of adventure means, right? Like, you... Right, but it's not like, like, ooh, adventure. It's like, ooh, adventure. Right. Um, You said the name of the bar was Righteousness, didn't you? Of course. Well, odd question. Um, Do you have a place for people to stay here? Well, look, I mean, you're at the bar. Right, I don't mean um, stay as in stand. I mean stay as in sleep for long periods of times, possibly hide. I think she um, means rooms. Yes. Well, I mean, look around, of course. This, this is a whole big room we have here. With beds. Well, I'm... I'm it doesn't have to be a bed. I um, tavern. A private like, place. Or, or a hotel. It's, it's tavern. I mean, we have a place for you to sleep if you need to. Uh, do you have any... People, persons, cats occupying those places. Um, there is a uh, there's a sound uh, that seems to be coming from the upstairs area, and you hear this um, <coughs> uh, these loud booms and this uh, sort of grizzled looking dwarven character. Um, he's got a he's got a beard, but half of it is burned off of his face, uh, but the other half is sort of pristine. And as he walks down the stairs. He throws this uh, sort of boomstick behind him and begins to like comb the half that's still there. Goes, I'm coming, I'm coming. Who did? Are you picking up strays now? Well, they they came in and they're asking questions. They came in. All right, so hold your hands up. Hold your hands up. You don't have cuffs on you. Uh, um. Oh, uh, hell. And he stands up on a chair uh, on this little stool and looks at me. You don't have cuffs on your. You're alive. For now. So far. <laughs> what the blue hell are you doing here? We're looking for people. Oh, you're looking for people. Oh, we are looking for people. You're taking a little soldier. Yeah, it's me, In a hill. Yes. Go back to where you came from. We don't want to. Who? Th- what? We're here on a very important mission to rescue someone important to us. Also, we're the strays, but he has a squirrel? That seems counterintuitive. I've got a soft spot for furry animals. He's always got my back. Thanks, sir. I also like the squirrel. (laughs) That's just quite lovable. What are you doing in my bar? As I said, we were looking for somebody. We We ended up in the room back there. Stupid. And he, he will uh, sort of get down off the ground and sort of toddle over to the door and like sort of look in the door and close it and open it up again and look inside. I didn't walk in there. Did you pick that up? I did. Okay. All right. Well, welcome to the bar, I guess. Do you have rooms? Like if we need to sleep? <laughs> in case you want to take a little nappy. Well, I mean, Here and you know. Every Here 16 in the underworld. hours or so, it's, it's important sure. to recharge. It's good for your your body. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> the living are funny. I'm, I'm mostly concerned. Um, dear old father once told me a wonderful, wonderful word about um, 
a place called righteousness, and that seems to be the place of your ma. And it's, I know it's probably symbolic, but quite frankly, he always said, hide in righteousness, my dear. And when one says such a thing, you tend to take these things to heart. So we were just wondering if um, there were anyone hiding here that would be interested in living things. Sure. Sure. Here, do me a favor. Come, c come with me. I want to show you, you something. You're, you're brand new to the area. I feel like I'd be doing a disservice. Totally here if I didn't give you the tour. So here's the bar. Hmm. That's the room you came in. Upstairs, you'll find some squalid rooms with uh, some bugs and things of that sort. There's no beds or anything except for the one room that we sort of compiled the mess of rags and things of that sort that you can rest on. Um, oh, here, come here. Let me finish the rest of the tour. And he'll he'll toddle over to the front door and he says, this is the rest of the landscape. And he'll open the door and sort of gesture outward. As he gestures outward, you will see the remnants of a town. Uh, you'll see sort of broken down um, uh, buildings that seem to be uh, that seem to be haggard and sort of worn uh, randomly. You'll see little little tent flaps and things of that sort as people have sort of set up shop. Uh, the the sky is an uh, ember sort of color, and he's like, uh, we don't get sunsets here because that's not what we're supposed to get. Is there a sun or anything? Um, so it stays perpetually like this. Um, and unless a dust storm moves in, in which case you'll probably die, but we don't have to breathe, so we don't worry about it. This bar was established God knows how long ago as a play station, if you will. Occasionally heroes will come through here, some less than others, and, uh, and stay here in righteousness and hide in righteousness for a time uh, before they set out for parts unknown. Uh, but here, um, I don't think you've seen everything. And, and for anybody that wants to, he gathers by the door and sort of points out. He's like, you're here for your friend, right? Someone that you're here to rescue? Chances are he's in there. And he'll point up to the distance. And if you orient yourselves, you know exactly where he's pointing to. He's pointing to the Red Keep. And as you look out the door, you see where the Red Keep once stood, and before it stands a monstrous sort of abomination, a, a building of black and iron that seems to jut out at different directions. Um, you see, uh, you hear, if you listen carefully enough, the sounds of screams that seem to be emanating from this monstrous black obsidian prison that seems to loom over this entire area. If they're here, they're probably in there. Sounds about right. Is this the adventure you are looking for? The one we found. Because you got it. <clears throat> well, love what you've done to the place, first of all. Um, second, rude. And third, shall we? So do you know the area? Like, have you been there before? <coughs> I've been around it. I don't generally go there. So, I stay here in Tavarua because the, de the dead like to drink a lot. <laughs> they don't sleep, but I can show you the way. That would be really helpful. I mean, we haven't been here before, and we were thinking that maybe, well, I was thinking that maybe since you have been here before, I mean, because you're here, <laughs> that, that you might be able to help us to, like, navigate the waters and maybe not get ourselves killed. He's going to look over at Dash and, like, share that, that, the eye contact that's like, yeah, dude, we're going to do this. Give me an animal handling check and advantage. <laughs> oh, first one was 16? All right. That's 25. Dash looks outside and looks back at you. And, <laughs> and but you see your resignation as it, he, he, he's not leaving your side. He hasn't done so in death. He's not going to do it in life. Would I recognize in any way, like, like do, do the energy of, like, say, two druids, does, would I recognize that he's a druid as well? Um, I don't but know. Give me, give me a, uh, roll a d20, add your wisdom modifier. As you see him sort of connect with the, with the, the with, um, with. Uh, just straight wisdom modifier? Yeah, it's <coughs> fixed and dash. 17. Sort of you know what? He's he's putting off some some crunchy vibes. Uh, he's wearing all earth tones. He's got uh, he's talking that he. I think he's got a druidic focus, correct? Uh, but that's but the energy channels from him to dash like fix 
like transfers energy. You see it like a flow almost as you sort of close your eyes and concentrate a little bit. I'm gonna cast Druidcraft, a little flower, and mm -hmm. say in uh, 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 say in Druidic. Are you like me? Well, I'm much shorter. Well, no, I know that, but <laughs> you know, like. I'm just gonna put like, my hand like just hovering them right above the flower that she has, mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna make it bigger. Whoa! Well, <laughs> this is my party trick. I can also make it do this. And then, like, just have it, like, slowly wilt and then come back again. Ah, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I like that. Um, you guys see them uh, speaking in an odd uh, language. Uh, and it's, it's, it's an odd translated language of, of, of sort of, um, uh, that sounds very sort of primal, but it's it, it interposed with these... And, and it's these, these uh, like sounds of nature and rocks clanging together and water and things of that sort. But this uh, conversation, they, seems to, uh, they seem to have this uh, sort of simpatico and sort of conversation that, that, that tends to happen back and forth. Okay. Um, I'm going to close my eyes and take a look around. Okay. Yeah, give me... Uh, it takes you a little bit of time, uh, less time because you've been practicing. Uh, nobody in the room seems to spark with that energy. Yeah, you don't see any of the sort of symbols, but it was where uh, you do take a, as you're sort of fading out of this, you do sort of turn your head and, and Karma, Pascal, Ka Karma just sort of looks up at you and he's just like, he's a beacon in the night. He is like through the dark, he is a light. So you can see this thing from miles away. Um, and sort of like smiles up at you and you kind of look down and smile at it and but you realize that if, were you to not to be connected you could spot this thing from a long ways off. Interesting. Well, should we go, guys? You can't be serious. You, well, you, you saw it. I pointed it out to you. The thing in the... Is that what you're, well, you're really going to do this? We have to rescue and I figured that the sooner we leave, the sooner we can rescue and then come The out. green guy hasn't said anything yet. You, you don't want to go over there. Oh, I very much want to go. It looks like it's pretty unanimous that we all go. Yeah, it does look unanimous. All right, all right. You can't just go waltzing into the prison. Yeah, you, you, you can't. Uh, they're gonna catch you. You need a, you need a back entrance. God, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna die again. Um. I'm sorry. Can we have your name? Yes. Everyone here can have my name. You conjure it at your own will. Ravenger. <laughs> you want me to spell it? R A V, go f yourself. Jer. I was I was pretty close on that. I was R A V A V A V A V A V A V A V A V A Somebody protect the kid, please. He's so sweet. Like I have dash. All right. Um, Ravenger. It was. Ah. Between you and Fix, you seem like the kind of gentleman who would um, perhaps gain some information at the bar. Oh, I. Have you heard speak of uh, Cheshire possibly being down here? <laughs> hey, gents. Gents, everyone put your beer mugs down. This guy over here wants to know if we heard a Cheshire being here. And everybody lifts their glass in the air. And then they drink and put it down. You think if Cheshire were here, we'd still be here? Maybe if he was trapped over there. We all follow Cheshire. Wait, he'd make you less dead? We follow Cheshire here. All of us. Lads, ladies. And everyone stops and Pulls out a necklace, some of them have tattoos, some of them have hair. We're not supposed to be here. We followed the chaos cult. But something ain't right. We were supposed to be somewhere else. Mandrake 
is going to reach into his bag and pull out the Cheshire Pendle. Oh, damn it. <laughs> and uh, he'll go over to the front door and lock it. He's one of us. He's one of us. And everyone stops and they push the, the tables back. Here's what we know so far. Cheshire ain't here. But he ain't in the place where he can get us. We're supposed to not be here. We're supposed to be in his realm. We died in his service, but we're in a holding pattern. We're stuck here. So we do what best we can. We spread chaos. We fight the establishment. We have this place. We found the bar. and Each of us was led here by a different sort of cat or feline-like creature. We realize that while we're in here, the imps, the devils, the demons walking about, they can't seem to set foot across the threshold. You're in for a world of hurt. We can grant you a, a, a bit of asylum, but none of us are anxious to go out there until the time of reckoning comes when Treasure comes and picks us up and yanks us to where we're supposed to be. There's another group of people. They live on the outskirts of the city. They're right where the, the dark woods sort of was or used to be. If you can reach them, they're supposed to have a man that's been inside the prison. It's all hearsay and stories, but he's the only one that we heard of that got out. What's, it, what's his name? Bloody hell if I know. <clears throat> Start asking around. How, how will we know if we find the right group of people? Oh, I don't know, Missy. Maybe you go up and you start asking nicely. Bring some beer with you. I got quite a lot of that in the back. We've got quite a lot of that, see? Go. Go and, and, and make your way to the outskirts. Avoid being spotted if you can. If you can be spotted, try to talk your way out of it. Do you have any gold? Hmm. A little? We have some. Good, you're gonna need it. Do you have any souls? Souls? Yeah. Some of the bigger ones, they trade in souls. I, I, I might just have one. And he'll pull out the red gem. It might work. It might not. Head towards the outskirts of the city. If you get in trouble, tell them Ravenger sent you. It's got a 50-50 shot. They're giving you each... Either a little leeway or they're going to ask you to pay my debts. Should we know what your debts are or are we just kind of winging it? It's better if you don't. Oh. Who wants to know your secrets today? Oh, I, it's no secrets. I just owe a lot of people a lot of money. <laughs> it's kind of a running theme for us followers of Cheshire, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Do you sell your soul? Wait, once. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Frank's got the record. He's got six or seven times. Isn't that right, Frank? And Frank's like, hey! <laughs> Six strong! He's <laughs> like, ah, you stupid idiot. <laughs> mm. um, I will find him. And he's going to pull out the card and show it to him. <laughs> Who's, who's he? Cheshire. That's not a Cheshire. Oh. No. But, and he'll like point out the outside. Oh. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you have a, you had a mail card, right? I have, yeah, yeah. I have the... Why is the eyes blanked out? Don't know that part yet. I'm gonna pull mine out since I see this. Guess you want the only one? No. Find. Hey, he's got the same thing. Find Cheshire. F I N D. D. Yeah, find Cheshire. Yep. So. It would be in your best interest to help us in any way that you can. I don't know about that. If we get out of here, we can help. 
Cheshire, and that gets them out of this bar, out of this holding pattern. So it's in their best interests to help us get Flint. So anything you can do would be greatly appreciated. All right, head to the outskirts of the city. You'll find a group of people. They seem to be living in the trees. Tree people. Yeah, you can't distinguish them. That sounds right up your alley, Zoe. People living in the trees? I don't know. Maybe. Aren't you (laughs) plants? Possibly. It's also as if we knew someone who used to live in a tree. Or someone who's infatuated with trees. Well, aren't we all? Literally someone who grew out of a tree. Fine, and when you're the one for the job. (laughs) Thank you. He just wanted to hear your idea. That's true. He just wanted to give me a hard time. So you've got to admit, he grew out of a tree. He's a little bit of an advantage. Could we have a few barrels of beer, please? Um, there is a uh, there is a. Give me a persuasion check. (laughs) <laughs> is he trying to steal my beer? He asked for it. That did not go well. Um, so I got a eight. There's not a. You, you look as the people around the bar start looking about as if they want to start helping, but they're, they're still not sure whether you can really bring the, the, the heat. But a few of them sort of reach over and they grab sort of uh, man made pouches and handmade sort of containers and they, they start piling them onto a little table. Um, uh, they pile a couple of pouches that that they seem to fill with a, with like a beer, like a like a substance, and the, uh, a couple of them take a few gold pieces and throw them on the table. Um, and there is a uh, there is a moment where uh, one of the um, a, a a woman, a tall tall woman, probably one of the tallest women you've ever seen in your entire life, uh, walks over and she goes, "Can you really do it?" I'll take off my hat, I'll brush the top of it, and then I'll put my Cheshire pendant on, put my hat back on, and say, he thinks so. She'll reach into her back pocket and take out this green onyx stone. She's like, there's three of them in here. It's the best I can do. And you are? Maggie. When I get him, I'm sure he'll repay you. Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll take the soiled, the soiled robe out of my bag. Mm. I'll take all of the alcohol they gave me, wrap it in that robe, tie okay. it up, all right. put it back in the bag so that I can easily call it for you. Sure, you've got 20 extra gold pieces. It's not a lot, but it's rare here in, in this particular area. You've also got a green stone, which she said there are three of them in. Mm-hmm. If you want to take a few minutes um, to to examine it and, and things of that sort, you will come to discover that this thing contains three souls, um, but it's not human souls. It's uh, it's like two rats and a and like a, a bird, like a like a pigeon or something like that, mm-hmm. that have been contained in this soul, in, in this sort of green onyx gem. So uh, they hand these supplies to you, and then a uh, ravager looks at you and he's like, "All right, get out." Before right. we go, it's tradition. We all drink together because we're all in it together. Don't just grab the bottle. Because this ain't the good stuff. It's water, damn. And don't just grab the actual good stuff. I'm just pouring you guys all a drink real quick. As he sees you doing this, Ravager will go around the space and sort of uh, grab a couple of other bottles that he hid under the floorboards and pours them all uh, into small glasses around the room. And you see this beaten down group of people that have been holding out for a god long past when they thought they were going to be rescued. Look at all of you. And it says, uh, all right, what do you call yourselves? As in the group, or...? Yeah, the group. What do you call yourselves? What's your name? We haven't really put much thought into that. But you're adventurers. We are. But you guys have a name? Something you call your family? Your brothers and sisters in arms? Never really thought about it. Well, what's something that defines you? 
Persistence. <laughs> Persistence. <laughs> A little stupidity thrown in. Stubborn. Stubborn. Peppered with fun? Peppered with fun. You're persistent, you're stubborn, and you're peppered with fun. Don't forget a dash of impulsiveness. Dash you. There's more than a dash of that here. Fail. <laughs> There's just only one. Dash. Sounds like you're you're you've been drinking. <clears throat> well, not yet. I mean, he just poured the. I may have been drinking a little. <laughs> <laughs> you right. said we're going to save Wanda. Yes. Lack of sounding a little big headed. The Saviors? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's well, I have to say, I'm really bad <laughs> at naming things. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not one to talk. I worry because it feels a little egotistical. All right, so I prefaced it with that fine. With so do it for us. Was do it for us that lost our names. The nameless. Yeah. All right. The saviors of wonder. A little pig headed, a little drunk. Heroes with no name. To the nameless. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like, shit. My thing. <laughs> My whole thing is names. <laughs> Well, once you take them all, we won't have any left. So. I would also have accepted the O-Needers. Where do you want O-Needers? Do you have a way to get word out? To <laughs> and tell them what exactly, boy? Do you know the only... The one thing that's more dangerous than no hope at all? So, if you win, we knew you'd do it. If you don't, then we're the ones that suffer. It's all The thing stronger than hope. What's that? Whiskey. <laughs> I was going to say whisper. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. I hated you less than I hated other people. And you were always a bigger pain. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> watch, watch the bar. Don't die. Um, his, and he just start reaching into his pockets like a handful so of gold and be like, take it. No, t please, God, you're an idiot. Keep the gold. We're keeping the gold. Keep yeah. the gold. It's just like falling out of his hand. Like yes, stop. No, no, like, no, no. Somebody please, please protect the boy. Yes, I got it. Right. Here, you take it. Okay, thank you. He opens the door. <laughs> Is anybody casting anything before you leave? Um, I just put a lot of gold in my pocket. If How much would that be? How much gold did you have? I have 2,000 pieces of gold. Okay, there's but, no way he pulled yeah. that up. Uh, like a handful's worth, like, maybe like 50 pieces, 30 pieces, 10 pieces, 5 pieces? 75 pieces. So subtract 75 and add 75 to your total. Okay. Go robbing me. I have nothing to cast. Stop. All right. Uh, the I'm not going to cast anything, but real quick, <laughs> I'm going to telepathically tell Charlotte to let Nazi know that uh, Wonder's Trickster God is gone right now. You're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Fix is out the door, just, just we, striding. Can, I would like really to imagine that he's trying to stride, but Day has him by the collar. I'm going to post a picture of the D20 I just rolled. I have also three to foot see <laughs> if fast. he reacts. <laughs> oh, no. What did he say to, to, the, to, the to that thing that was just sent? I'm going to go ahead and post that in the habitat. If you'd like to, you can join us in the Discord and see a picture of that. Oh. Next time we come back, we got him. And where's <laughs> everything? <laughs> Well, 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 I guess I got a little bit of work to do. 
I'll see you when you get back, sweetie. Oh my goodness. I'm not your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> He's not my boyfriend. I don't like your plans, Brad. Hey, do you, do you know of any other job occupancy? I, I've got friends. Not yet, but I'll let you know. All right, boys, you heard him. Potential free swim in Wonderland. And he will shut off connection. Cool. Uh, yeah, you guys set out uh, into the dust filled air around you. You see other beings that sort of walking around. A lot of them have these sort of uh, chains at different parts of their body. Um, you guys are wearing clothes that are somewhat conspicuous. Um, because a lot of your clothing is clean, and for the most part, everyone here is well kept, with the exception of Fix. Uh, Fix has a hood that he sort of pulls up and, and over himself and sort of fades into the shadows a little bit as this hood comes up and sort of <laughs> surrounds him a little bit. He's still there and present, he's just a little harder to spot. Um, uh, what are you doing? She's gonna use the brooch of disguise to make her clothes look tattered and. Okay, uh, there's a hideous again. brooch, but you guys watch as, as this sort of, uh, you still look like you? Yeah, I look more human. Okay, cool. Um, and then she's gonna pull Mimi off and ask it to become a cloak. Uh, Mimi, I don't think you can form clothing. And I think we established that she can form objects, oh, like okay. a candlestick, a, a teacup, and stuff equivalent to her size, but she can't really form like like a dress or like mm -hmm. a like a shirt. And it would be weird, like, yeah. like to have like a fleshy cloak. Like and I'm all about it, but she can she can form like objects for right now. So mm -hmm. if you want her to form something else that you can um, instead of the like pearlescent band that she is, she's gonna turn ask her to look more leather. Uh, for the for the most part, uh, guys, uh, Mimi is a small uh, baby mimic that uh, Day has tamed and is a part of her menagerie of items and people that she cares about. So, yes, Nyx. Uh, how far would you say, time-wise, would it take to get to where we're going from? Like, if... Just okay, like, so the directions the, the, the directions Ravenger gave you is that if you compare this to areas outside, you have to walk quite a ways to make it through the sort of circular towns that if it's built akin to your version of Wonder, where the mouth is at the center and other towns sort of build outward and build outward. You know that if you traveled all day, uh, it would take uh, probably about 12 hours. Um, you also don't know that time works differently here. Like there's no sunset, there's no, and nobody here has the keen mind feet. So keeping track of time is going to be tricky. Um, but you know it would take about eight to twelve hours um, of 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 walking nonstop in order to make it to the outskirts of the city where Roger gave you instructions to the dark woods area. I'm putting my my hood up on my coat. Okay, cool. I keep forgetting I have. Okay. Well, uh, now we're doing now. Uh, and when does he go, you can call me Maddox. And as he says it, he changes into the poor, badly clothed uh, human. Uh, yeah, Maddox is uh, uh, is there, and he's just he's missing a few teeth. He's a little beaten and bothered, and uh, and just looks almost like he fits right in uh, to the situation and the surroundings found there in. Um, how are we doing this, gang? Are we trying to be inconspicuous? Are we stealthing? Are we walking with purpose? Are we... Yes? Uh, Mandrake's going to take that bundle out where that robe was, and he's going to empty the contents with all the alcohol into the backpack. Not in the bag of holding, but actually in the backpack. Put that back in the bag of holding, and then... He's going to ask Nyx to look at the robe and just see if there's any magic associated with it, any kind of curse or anything like that. Uh, I didn't come in contact. Maddox stops. Uh, or No, not Maddox. Uh, 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 Mandrake stops, and he sort of... Uh, he takes his backpack out, and uh, it, he, he starts taking the things out of the back, the, the little bundle, mm -hmm. and uh, he lifts a bottle of, of booze and puts it in the bag, and you see uh, passerby sort of stop and look. And you see uh, him reach in and grab another thing of beer, 
put it into a backpack and another group of passerby stop and look. Let's slowly start walking over to him. Just like, just grab him and says, like, keep it, keep it dead. <clears throat> um, rather than grabbing, I'm just going to place the bundle into the bag. Uh, I would say, as he goes, keep it down, keep it down, uh, a group of individuals walk towards you. Um, uh, uh, it looks like a group of two or three um, figures, uh, but all three of them have hoods on, and one sort of takes it down, and he, uh, the gentleman looks over at you and says, uh, Hello, sir. You know from around these parts, how are you? Pretty obvious. <laughs> Elizabeth. Uh, a friend of mine does. She don't have them. <coughs> There's a chain uh, around you. Are you in need of a guide? Uh, we'll be fine. We're fine. No, we're, we're good, thank you. I was hoping you could contribute to the local uh, sort of watch group that we have here. Uh, I noticed you had some um, things in your pack. Are you okay? You speak quite proper. Oh. Doesn't really match what you look like. Weird. Family growing up, things like that. She recently died. I'm still new here. Yeah. Give me a deception check. Can I, can I assist him since I'm... Sure, how are you assisting him? I mean, I'm telling him like I'm still new here and I'm going through a story. Sure, roll at, uh, roll at advantage then. 18. Why don't you got a chain? Um, uh, you, you know, when, when, when you first die, it's like the, the, the chain comes, you know, from this, your, your past life, your sins, and things <coughs> you've done improper. Hers is, um, she's, hers is, hers is on its way. And like, can oh Muni God. start turning into a purple chain? Because she's on my ankle. How do you communicate to me? You, we've never established that you have a telepathic connection with Mimi. So this would just be Mimi's insight here, like, into the situation. You've always told her what to change into. Yeah, um... I cast message to her. All right. Uh, are, what are the... Are there semantic and verbal components, components to you casting a message? Mm, yeah. Okay. I, but it would... You, you, you start casting, and then uh, the, the two of them sort of look at each other, and they uh, one of them sort of uh, hits his back, uh, the, the guy speaking. But you manage, and as you watch, Mimi starts slowly changing into a purple chain. Because Fix has been here for a while, would this be something he has readily available to be like, oh, yeah, hey, like, you know, like, you just, like, latch onto somebody? <sighs> just because he's more or less familiar with how... I think you've gone out before. It's hard to... It's a spectral chain. Sure. So I think you, after a, a bit of time, would have found a chain that you managed to dye purple, but it's not for it's like, not anyone. <laughs> it's not for investigation. It would be almost like you see this guy walking and it's really dusty outside and he looks like he's got a chain on his leg. You're not gonna go up close to it. So you can pull it out here, but it's it's not gonna pass rigorous inspection. <laughs> if it's doing the trick, it's doing the trick. Hey, listen, I'm not here to get in your business or nothing. And yet here you are. Yeah, here we are. It sucks, don't it? It does. And I'm going to use Fae Presence. All right, what is Fae Presence? Uh, da, 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 da. Once for a short rest as an action, you can cause each creature in a 10-foot cube from you to make a wisdom saving throw or become charmed or frightened by you until the end of your next turn. Which are you picking? Right. <laughs> wisdom verse 15. Um, two of them? Uh, take off. <clears throat> Two of them look at this guy, and uh, and they sort of whisper. They're like, uh, "That's tree fuck," and uh, they'll throw. They'll, they'll they'll sort of back away from the speaker, and the speaker sort of grits his teeth, uh, and he says, "I'm not gonna run away from you." That's fine. You're welcome to stay. But I don't promise any good comes of it. How about I just scream really loud that you guys have beer, a liquid. <clears throat> On you. You could tell us what that is. And then she's gonna imitate that noise. What's going on, dear? I 
he is going to reach forward towards you. Uh, give me a dexterity saving throw if you try to bat his hand away. How close might I hurt? You're really close. I want to dash at him and cast Primal Savagery, which allows me to have, like, fangs and claws, and I can bite this person. All right, give me an attack. Uh, this dex saving throw does not matter now if he's just going to start ripping into this dude. Uh, um, give me an attack, uh, and then uh, uh, he's not a high D AC. He's okay, great, because this is a very low roll. This what did you get? Five. Five? It's not that low. Uh, you uh, you run forward, and you guys watch as this sort of uh, meek and mild fix uh, sort of uh, sees that Day is being uh, reached for, and he sees her reacting this way, and he sort of reaches forward, growing out these like uh, these fangs and these claws. And for a minute there, it's reminding you of a, another hero that 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 uh, would grow fangs and claws and sort of change into a bestial shape. And uh, for a brief second, it even looks like him, uh, but it, uh, he. He sort of runs forward, and this uh, this gentleman is able to sort of like uh, take him off to the side and sort of push him off to the side. Hey, everybody! We got some live ones here. Come and get it! And he just starts screaming out. Uh, you notice. A lot of people that seem to be walking about the streets and heads start poking out of tents and start poking their way out of doorways as uh, a bunch of creatures start uh, slowly approaching this group on the street. You two were all gathered about an area and it seems to be, I wanna say seven individuals that seem to ha have caught attention. They are not acting at the moment. They're just sort of coming out of their respective homes and hiding places. And this gentleman sort of stares at you and he says, you know what this is? No, I don't, that's why I asked. It's my passenger. And the fact that you didn't know means you don't have one, in it? We did just establish our meal here. And he will take his chest and sort of pull back the, the, the cloak a little bit. And you see a sort of cavity in this chest as a small um, worm-like creature with gnashing teeth. Uh, its head sort of pokes out of this small cavity and sort of like swivels about and sort of like uh, makes eyes with you and it doesn't really like make a sound or anything but it burrows back inside and as it burrows back inside of this open wound in the chest there is a <coughs> from the from the person who seems to be sort of trying to maintain composure as he as he pulls the shirt back down what what does this classify, this worm thing? Is it like a demon or is it Give me a uh, history check at disadvantage. It was a really quick thing and you're trying to analyze something that's already gone from your mind. History or religion? I need to know one. You have no idea, Mama. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> it's, but it's enough to freak you out. We don't have time for this. Another, uh, the seven uh, figures start to creep forward, and they are all a little bit closer, trying to see what's happening in this situation. I'm, I'm going to say, let's just go, and I'm going to use my bonus action. I'm not going to act aggressive. I'm going to use my bonus action at my side to uh, 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 activate my fling tongue scimitar okay. so that it lights up, and with my full action... I'm going to uh, cast, I'm going to produce flame in my hand so that I've got flame here, I've got flaming sword here, and I start walking forward towards the woods. Uh, uh, intimidation Intimidation check, please, at advantage. Uh, wisdom saving throw. I have a plus zero to intimidation. That's a nat one? That's a nat 20. Nat 20. Ooh, that was a 12. Uh, you feel your your body tense up and your feet start to sort of freeze to the ground as she not only produces flame but ignites the scimitar. But something about the situation, uh, maybe the events of what happened the other night, allow you to kick out of it and you feel like your movement returning back to you. What did you get? A 12. A 12. Uh, the fire is enough for them to start the whispers of um, Jailer sort of going about the crowd. Like, Jailer, Jailer. And, and the seven people that were sort of walking forward sort of turn tail and 
and walk off uh, back to their homes and sort of looking about on the street, looking immediately to the sky and sort of like pulling hoods on and, and moving away from the premises. Do we all hear those? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're not. And they, they sort of walk about and the gentleman and it's just sort of standing there in the road, like staring at you guys and sort of like bows his head. I'm walking, I'm just walking <laughs> yeah. with purpose. Yeah. Who's behind her? One. Behind. Two, three. Emily's bringing up the rear. Which <laughs> Charlotte's watching him. Charlotte's watching him. Uh, you do a little bit of channeling where you look. Uh, are you able to look through Charlotte's eyes, or you're able to? Just, we have a telepathic. Yeah, telepathic. If she sees something, she'll tell me. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Charlotte uh, sees this and whispers to you that he is. Um, he is not moving from this spot, um, and so much so that he begins to shake as you guys make your way. The last thing that Charlotte sees is his body hit the ground and something crawl out of his chest and start making its way towards the, th down the street. Towards us? No. All right. Uh, I would try to walk close to fix. Uh, how are we, so we're just walking sort of heads down. Are we trying to imitate the area? Now, hang on. Are you not aggressively, but like a leave me alone? Baby, I'm you can't purpose. have fire in your arms okay. and fire in a flaming no, sword and be like, "Hey, how's it going?" Yeah, no, 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 Top no. Of the but world. I, I, it's that it's that feeling. Okay, when you're walking through, you're walking a with purpose. Place and you don't want anybody to bother you. Okay, then like I, it's okay. So is the scimitar still on? The scimitar is still. Is fire still in your hand? Yeah. Okay. 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 It might be time to calm down now. Okay. If he says that, I'll, I'll drop it. Both? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all of you give me eh, performance checks as you start to try to appear like you belong here and walk with purpose. Why can't I ever do anything? Six. Six. Twelve. Twelve. Twenty not nat. Twenty not nat. Nat one. Ten. Ten. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. This could go either way. Uh, yeah, you know what? For the most part, uh, you guys seem to be fitting in just fine. Uh, there's a couple of times where, like, um, where you realize that the, the guys at the bar didn't really like traveling with Fix, because as you're walking around and people are sort of sort of to keep their heads down, uh, Fix will be like, "It's a nice pair of shoes." Yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's lovely to meet you. Damn it. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll sort of walk. Yes. Uh, one first, I'm going to ask Fix. What's the jailer? Is this something I know about? I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, Or is buddy. this like something that's like... Yeah, uh, uh, Fix is able to, this is hard because Chris uh, and I didn't really talk about right. this. And, uh, he spent a lot of time inside, but I think you, are, you, you know enough to know that there are, are the jailers that sort of, on their breaks, when they're not torturing people in the prison, will fly out of the prison and torture the people on the outside just for a little change of pace. Just for a laugh. Uh, flaming swords, um, sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the smells of fire and stuff like that associated with them. So you think that this, they also tend to like to do tricks, mm -hmm. you know, appear as a person, and then as the people swarm, they ignite and, and torture people in psychological ways as well. So they may have thought that Thoe for a time, was a jailer when she ignited the scimitar. Okay. Very uh, nasty lot. Yeah. <laughs> Could you describe one to me? Like, exactly what they look like, down to the teeth. It's fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> uh, give me a... Uh, how about this, buddy? Give me a straight-up intelligence. This is just figuring out a way to describe stuff in a way that that, that Mandrake would understand. Because you're, you're good at a lot of stuff, you're just not the best at at recalling specific details. Lucky for me, I'm this listening. is 17. 17? Uh, so yeah, Fix goes into this description. Uh, he's like, he's a big, big, tall, uh, red like a cherry, but not sweet and bitter. And uh, and he goes off to describe like horns that sort of come out of the head, uh, sharp teeth, squat to the ground. Um, although if they stood up, it'd probably be better for the spine. And, 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 and be better. Based on Drew, like our Drew connection, like, is this something that, like, that we would be picking up and like, oh, yeah, no, I told you this to me, like, you know, She's like, like scoliosis animal. is a thing. Like, it's just like, uh, like, you guys have these, like, talks of, like, uh, yeah, and, but as he's talking, like, and describing this, you're like, oh, my gosh, he's so, 
he's so innocent and, and sweet, but he, you all pick up on this vibe of like, he's just really nice. He's like, but he's, he's trying to describe it. You, you pick up, it's, it's big, it's red, it's squat, it's got wings, and it's got these, uh, this, usually a flaming sword, sometimes two, sometimes another weapon that seems to be like it's on fire, and uh, it, it enjoys torture. And we've established that Mandrake can draw. Correct. So Mandrake would start trying to sketch what he's saying to him, to try to try to draw. Absolutely, out. you're you're walking more and more through the towns. Uh, uh -huh. You pull out a piece of paper, and you pull out a pen or a, or, or a piece of charcoal and start sketching in your book. No. Are you sure? <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> While we're walking. No, I'm not going to do that. But I am going to turn to Nix and say. Hey, Nix, you know that, um, that toy that you have? This one? Different one? Yeah. If someone were to be holding that, could they continue to walk with us? Yeah. Hmm, I good. I hope so. Maybe show it to Nix? That's a problem. You think it's necessary? It's drawing a lot of attention. Almost as much as me. What you saying? It's up to you. Nix, would you like a distraction? Oh, that's what I got a dash for. Would you like a different distraction as is well? It, is it named dash? <laughs> you can name it dash. But is it named dash? It could be. Not, not that. Right. That's fair. Cool. I'm sorry. So Mandrick's going to take in as much as he can of what this description might look like for later. Okay. Yeah, you're you're listening as hard as you can, and you're trying to re re remember this description, but you're not you're not really writing anything down. You're not you're not drawing anything. So this is just trying to commit this as much as you possibly can to memory. Okay, this this squat. Uh, you know, he's getting into details about the eyes, and mm -hmm. you know, and this is one time. You know, it's the eyes, and uh, and they were drinking something. I don't remember what it was. And I said, Dash, you remember what it was, right? And and. And he's like, oh yeah, uh, uh, beer. And, and, we were and he just goes off on these like <laughs> sort of like long tangents. And I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't want to tell you how to do it, but Fix would keep talking until told to. There would be that moment where it would be like, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's accurate. Yeah, and Fix just kind of keeps on describing until somebody tells him to stop. And the piss poor tippers. Um, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's good. We'll, we'll come back like, to this later. But were they coming to the bar? Shh. Unless it was important. And then when they come into the bar, there's a message. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, how long do we walk like this for, gang? Are we walking? Are we pulling? How, how far is it to those woods? Seven hours? How tall Seven is hours, by the way. I'm yeah, yeah, you know what? Um, yeah. I, I think based on the performance checks and the fact that uh, at the further you get away from the central area, the more relaxed atmosphere is. It's almost like the the as things came to life about back in, in, in on your plane of existence, uh, things are starting to, you're finding no sense of life uh, around this area as you move away from it. So much so that the dirt becomes a little bit more rocky and uncomfortable to walk on. Um, at one point, you get your hopes up because you feel a light rain, and all of you are shocked to find that it's raining blood um, and, and, and little droplets of red on, on you. Um, but after a time, you find yourselves, uh, the road comes to an end. Like, literally, like where like the rocks that you were walking on sort of stop and before you um, lie trees. Uh, uh, b give me either perception or investigation based on whichever skill that you would like the most. Uh, druids, I would let you make a nature check as you look at these trees as well. 13. 13. Uh, 22. Nix's dice hate him tonight. 22. 22. 22. Yeah. This is a 4 on the die. Uh, what are we adding? Investigation, investigation perception, perception, nature. Perception. You're basically well, surrounded no. by these. You said perception? I did. Well, Girl. Oh. Girl. Okay, that would be 16. A 10. You see all. Oh. Uh, 10. <laughs> 22. 22. Uh, you guys are all looking, and the trees look somewhat fine to you. Uh, this is the furthest you've been away from righteousness. Uh, so you're not used to seeing this at all. Um, you, you see these trees and you sort of look forward and then uh, you guys are sort of walking towards the tree line and Mandrake goes, wait, and picks up a rock uh, back of the road and sort of 
throws it towards the trees, and as he does, uh, one of the branches of the tree um, unfolds from itself, reaches forward, grabs the rock, and closes back like this. Uh, when it does, you see a humanoid face that's large, 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 large. Think a uh, uh, treant from Lord of the Rings, yeah. like large, like these creatures that sort of are about this space. I say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, you just say it in common? Uh, no, I'm going to say it in Druidic. Okay. Um, there is a pause, and there is a rustle in the, in the trees that's, that passes from tree to 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 tree, to tree, to tree out of sight. Um, I'm going to start, as we're walking forward, I'm going to start uh, casting Druidcraft and making things bloom to the best of my ability. Okay. Uh, how deep into the tree line are you getting? Are you walking Ooh. straight in? Well, like I mean, we're all together, you know. so I'm, yeah. but I'm at the front of the group, so I'm just going to keep, I'm going to, I'm going to keep walking just inside the tree line, because we're looking for someone there. We don't know his name. So um, he starts walking into the tree line, and as she does, she starts casting druid craft on the trees around the area. But she breaks away from the group. Uh, does everyone follow her? I, I feel like I'd probably would go right behind her, because adventure and fun. Yeah. Uh, you're walking in. Uh, there is a time where it gets darker and darker as the treetops. You yeah, look up just in time to see them rays and cut off that dim orange light making the area uh, have little tiny patches of the orange light that seems to shift through um, there's a time as you walk amongst the trees sort of casting druid craft and looking for any sort of sign of life uh, as you make your way about <laughs> Uh, as you make uh, that's a perfect timing as you make your way about Thoe as you walk forward um, a, a spear uh, comes flying out from the trees shunk, and lands in the ground in front of you hello uh, it is with uh, boo calm down uh, 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 as she says hello um, uh, figures will come out from the trees uh, shrouded in what looks to be uh, a, a bark that they have crafted onto their bodies and arms and uh, encircle the group, walking out from the trees themselves, sort of standing there and encircling the group heads down. Do, do they look familiar like anybody that we might know? They are covered in a dark sort so of bark okay. right now. Um, Mandrake's going to say hello in Sylvan. One will take the, the faceplate off and say, who are you? He says it in Sylvan? Yes. Uh -huh. um, so you understand, and you understand. I understand. And you understand. I understand. Four people speak Sylvan. What y'all talking about? Um, they said hello. We are the nameless. <laughs> it is all right. It is all right. Anwin is here. It's a stone Sylvan. And in common, you hear Anwin will save the mother tree. And that's where we're going to end tonight's episode. What? Yeah. Oh my God. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to get to that. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in tonight uh, for the very first episode of the of the Nameless going to to war in hell. Um, uh, uh, as the uh, beings about the area take off uh, of their faces and reveal themselves to be uh, your people, uh, long thought dead in the fire that claimed the mother and father tree. Um, so. Um, so we will just dive into a little bit more of that 
later. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, like I said, join us on um, Thursday for a little bit of World of Warcraft, and then on Friday for some Neverland, uh, uh, as we uh, have a, a, another group of misfit heroes that seem to be searching around for their people in their home. Uh, and I'm very excited for uh, this coming week's episode. Uh, uh, last week, if you missed it, uh, we got into a little bit of the mythos of the of the crocodile, which is my own personal take on the crocodile, which I hope people liked and enjoyed, I, and, and I, I'm hearing that they did, so uh, so tune into that. Uh, there's also some fun clips of a pirate flipping off another group of pirates that <laughs> made me pee myself a little bit. So um, so tune into that. Um, we love you guys so, so much. Uh, I know I say it a lot, but I can't say it enough that there's always a spot at the table for you. Um, uh, try to go find other people in your community that share the same nerdy passions. Uh, Indigo Connect. And uh, uh, one more question before we go, the same question we ask every week. Hey, do you wonder? We'll catch you guys soon. <laughs>